I've come to the conclusion that many of your pro-blacks are pretty much insane. Why do I say that? Because when you deconstruct their ideas and their concepts, they make absolutely no sense. Um, first off, you know, your pro-black will sit there and say that they are all about the love of their black people, yet they will spend most of their time attacking other black people. They will never, you know, go and challenge the very white man that they say that they hate so much. Instead, they will spend most of their time on social media such as your Facebook, your YouTube, your Twitter, and others Instagram arguing and attacking other black people. How does this make your position pro-black? If you're attacking other black people, how is that pro-black? I mean, you, you listen to that, that's just, that's just not logical. I mean, how is it, what, do you, what is this, what is this, what is this all about? I mean, what are you trying to say? That your position is the only position? Your ideas are the only ideas? And that your way is the defining statement of what black is? This is what is so insane about your pro-blacks. The other insane thing about your pro-blacks, which relates to this very same argument, is your pro-blacks hypocritical con idea on certain concepts. Now, your pro-black will say that they are about group economics, but whenever they have a chance to work with a black businessman like myself, they want to come at you with a whole bunch of rules, stipulations, and terms. And if you're all about, you know, being proud of your race and supporting black people, wouldn't you want to support the products of a black person? I mean, there aren't that many of them. There aren't that many black business people out here producing products, but you want to come, Mr. Pro-Black, and say that there has to be a whole bunch of rules and stipulations and that I need to jump through your hoops. I mean, not even white people or non-black people put all these rules and stipulations on you like your pro-black does. Your pro-black literally makes it impossible to deal with. And because of all their hoops, most black businesses just say, you know what, I'd be better off just dealing with somebody else because I just don't need the grief. And when you listen to this pro-black, I mean, Everything is just insane. I mean, you say that you're about group economics, but when the black businesses come, you say you don't want to support those businesses because they're not doing things your way. Whenever a black person presents a difference of opinion, the pro-black then wants to attack other black people. And all of this is under the guise of using the shaming tactic of white supremacy. Anybody who disagrees with this um, pro-black is considered a agent of white supremacy or a coon, a black buffoon, a sellout, an Uncle Tom, or some sort of minstrel. I find it very interesting that, you know, with your pro-black, they, again, think that their ideas are the only ideas, and that their definition of black is the only definition of black. And this is not the case at all. I mean, the whole goal of civil rights originally was designed so that black people could have the freedom to not only live their lives, but express their version of black. But when this pro-black, you know, it's almost like a fascist state. Their version of black is the only black, and they feel that everybody has to conform to their standards. This is why I call them very immature, and I believe that they're very much like a junior high school child, especially a junior high school girl, because junior high school girls want everybody to be like them and to act like them, and that their definition for cool is cool. And the same thing with your pro-black. They're very immature. And they think that their way is the only way. Their solution is the only solution. And they think because they can use some 50-cent words in a way to shame and bully others that they, are, they appear intelligent. But once you break past the veneer of your pro-black, you start to see how emotional, irrational, and completely dysfunctional your pro-black actually is. And you see how dysfunctional their followers actually are because they don't want they don't even understand how the world works on an adult level they don't understand that there are that going around bullying and shaming people is not how you get things done and attacking people is not how you get things done you have to have a more diplomatic hand in doing things and I have to be more tactful in approaching people because if you're diplomatic and tactful in approaching people then they may want to listen to your positions and they may want to support your positions and you may be able to work towards a constructive solution um, to the ills of the black community. But attacking people 
you know, doesn't solve anything. And then, more importantly, attacking your own people only exacerbates the situation. And this is what your pro-black does most of the time. They just spend most of their time attacking other black people and saying that they're wrong and their definition of black is wrong. But who died and made these people authorities over what is black? And who says that their definition of black should be the definition of black? And when we listen to them, you know, their version of black is pretty much backwards and insane because you sit there and talk about, you know, white supremacy and you hate the white man, but you, you spend more time talking about the white man than working towards, you know, improving the quality of life in your own community. I mean, how is talking about white supremacy and for hours on end in, you know, long rambling diatribes or making big Facebook post talking about white supremacy make things better for black people. Wouldn't, you know, creating images and media like I do with uh, the books back here, wouldn't that be more constructive? I mean, you say that you don't like the images in, in, in black media, but when somebody produces images of black media, then you say you don't want to support it because of, you bring in your straw man arguments such as light skin and dark skin. Or you say that this isn't just not what I want. And this, yes, you have a right to say that, but the whole thing is that if it's coming from a black person, you say that you are about group economics, you are about supporting your own community, you are about supporting the people in your own community, then why don't you do that? I mean, that's pretty, again, it's pretty backwards for you to sit there and complain about something, and then when somebody offers you a solution, you don't participate in the solution. But then again, many of your pro-blacks really don't want solutions from other black people. This is the whole paradox regarding your pro-black. They want solutions but they don't want them from themselves. They really want, you know, some white person to come in and approve of them, pat them on the head, and tell them how good they are. And this is why I say you're pro-black is pretty much insane, because how can you be pro-black and say you're about black empowerment and uplifting the race when, in actuality, all you are is about seeking the approval of white people or sitting up in an intellectual think tank um, where you and a bunch of elite Negroes you know, dictate the terms and conditions to the masses. Because when I listen to these pro-blacks, again, they sound very much like your um, fascist rulers or your dictators. They they really are a bunch of bullies. But as and from a Christian perspective, I really see them um, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees that Jesus had to contend with when he was walking the earth. These hypocrites would walk around creating all these big, large standards, wearing these long, large, phylact, large robes, and putting all these heavy burdens and standards on people, but wouldn't lift a finger to help anyone. And that's the way I see your pro-black. They're very much, again, like your Pharisees and your Sadducees, they're preventing black, like, preventing black people from moving forward, and they're holding people back. And this is something that, you know, Jesus talked about regarding the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that they were keeping people out of the kingdom of heaven, but, and weren't going to be able to come in themselves. And this is the way your pro-black is. They're keeping black people from building their own black community, and they're not even trying to make one effort to move anything forward. All they want to do is just sit there and bully and shame people and put these large, big standards on people and these huge stipulations and, you know, create these ever-changing standards for what black is. They want to bully you, again, bully you and shame you and intimidate you and harass you and tell you that, your version of black isn't black, but they themselves don't even have a definition of what black is. Their definition of black is some pseudo-afrocentric um, definition of black that doesn't fit any standard for blackness at all. It's just their own ideas mixed up with some, you know, armchair Negro who's already been proven to be wrong, or some other pseudo-intellectual who's been proven to be wrong, and they think because they can, you know, make things like these armchair rambling books talking about white supremacy um, or, you know, these crazy DVDs talking about white supremacy, that they have the all the answers to all these problems and their answers are the only answers and that no one can disagree with them. This is why I say many of your pro-blacks live in their own heads because in the real world you are going to have to contend with differences of opinion, different ideas, different concepts, and in order to get things done, again, you're going to need to have allies economically, socially, and politically to get things done. And in order to get things done, 
you're going to have to make compromises. But in the pro-black's mind, everyone has to agree with them. They're always right. Their way is the only way. And if anybody disagrees with them, they're a coon, a black buffoon, a sellout, an Uncle Tom, or an Uncle Ruckus, or even, in the case of some black women, a Piola. And this is the case, we you know, with them, not understanding that nobody gets anything done by themselves, nobody does things by themselves, and, you know, sitting there and having a long, rambling, armchair um, debate doesn't solve any problems. It's just you and a bunch of other people, again, like your Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, trying to make a bunch of rules, but not, under, not, not no understanding that none of them work. And this is why I say you're pro-black is nothing more than a hypocrite and a liar and, you know, a fraud, because they just sit there and they want to make all these rules and all these regulations and they want to, you know, send their acolytes to attack you and bully you into, you know, walking away from the forum and they want to have the podium so they can say a whole lot of nothing. And they really don't want to help anyone. All they want to do is just, you know, pontificate and appear intelligent while those of us who actually are intelligent, you know, can peel back the layers behind their words and read between the lines and just see it as the BS that it actually is. And that's just the way, you know, your pro-black is. And a lot of people, they just don't see the insanity, you know, regarding many of their words and how they are inconsistent with their actions. Because I look at, you know, your words and your actions, and they're not consistent with your pro-black. They talk about building, but then you ask them, what type of businesses are you planning for your community? How do you plan to buy property? How do you plan to invest? You know, these, these detailed questions are, are what, you have, what I had to ask when I was, you know, starting the SJS Direct Imprint. How do you expect to get money together to do certain things? How do you expect money to last for a period of time? And how do you expect to reach other black people? I mean, talking about a movement, talking about um, change, that doesn't change anything. Change requires planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. A lot of these guys, they want to be the leader, but the planning and the organizing, they don't want to do. They want to lead and control, but, you know, the planning and the organizing, they don't want to do. It, unless it's some rally or some march, but that's only short term. Again, these guys, because they think in their head, they only think short term. They don't think, you know, long term. Rallies and marches and all that stuff, yeah, that gets people going for about, what, five, ten minutes. Their emotions are all riled up. They don't get something like you going for five minutes, but in order to, you know, really create and build a black community, it requires long-term planning, long-term strategy, strategies that may be five, 10, 15, maybe even 20, 25 years, you know, to implement. And then you have roadblocks in the way and you have to, you know, learn how to adapt to those roadblocks. And you're gonna, again, need those economic, social, and political allies in order for you to achieve your goals. And you can't get economic, social, and political allies by alienating and aggravating people and bullying and harassing people. That's not how you're going to do things. Um, black community, the big problem is we have these, you know, wannabe totalitarian fascists who want to create, you know, a new talented tenth, really. These pro-blacks, they want to create a talented tenth type society where they are the lords over the rest of the Negro masses. And they don't understand that in the United States of America, that's just not how it works. Um, this is a democracy, and people can choose to f choose to work with you, or they can choose not to work with you. Nobody has to follow anybody's lead. They, the people work with you because they want to work with you. They support you because they want to support you. And that's all part of our Constitution and how it works. And with these guys, they want to make everything almost like a dictatorship. They want to make everything one way, and the world doesn't work one way. I mean, God never made the world to work one way. Um, your approach isn't the only approach, and your solution isn't the only solution. But again, because these guys live in their own heads, they think their way is the only way, and that, you know, sitting there pontificating about white supremacy is a constructive action, and that, you know, supporting black businesses is not, or working with black business people is not. And they think oh, everybody has to work on their terms, not understanding that in the real world, nobody works on your terms, especially those who have money. When you have to deal with people who are willing to offer you money, you have to work with them on their terms. And if you want, if they want to you know, work with your vision, you're going to have to make compromises to work with them. And this is something 
so they're pro-black doesn't understand because a lot of them pretty much are insane and when you try to bring logic and reason to your pro-black what he's going to do is try to argue you around um with, into cert argue you around in his circular arguments and in these circular arguments that's when you're going to start seeing you know the fallacies in their logic because They'll, they'll try to intimidate you first with their 50 cent words and then their shaming tactics and then they'll try to have the group come in and pile on with them you know thinking that this person again is intelligent but they're not intelligent at all and once you start deconstructing their words and you know breaking past the 50 cent words and the shaming tactics you start to see you know the fallacies in their own logic because again how can you expect to build a black community if you don't have people and people to black people to support you if you're attacking the very people who are trying to work with you how does that work and if you say you want group economics which is one of your tenets to build your black community how do you do that without supporting black businesses and this is how backwards you know your pro blacks actually are they want solutions for themselves they want to be the elites over the black community but who, made, who died and made you authorities? Who died and made you the elite members of the community? Who says that your ideas are the best ideas? And who says your ideas are the only ideas? When you look at these pro-blacks, they, they just, again, they live in their own heads, they live in their own worlds, and there is nobody there you know, to vet these ideas or bounce them off to. They want everybody to agree with them, not understanding that the best solutions come from disagreement. and Usually, after everybody disagrees to disagree, they form their consensus on how to best achieve the goals that are needed. But, you know, you can't really work with these type of pro-blacks because, again, they are emotionally immature, they're, mental, they're mentally dysfunctional, and they're, they're completely, you know, illogical and irrational in many ways. Again, like 12-year-old girls, everybody has to be my way, everybody has to be the same, act the same in order to be considered black. And that's a juvenile approach, you know, to race and economics and doing things. It's very immature. And when you deal with an immature person, you're never going to understand, you know, how the world works in an adult manner. And that's why I say, I guess, I'm learning that, you know, the truth about these pro-blacks is that they don't really want solutions. They just want people to agree with them. They just want people to submit to them. And they want to be, again, overlords over the black community so they can go over to the white people who they say that they hate so much and tell them that, you know, I will go back to these white people and get what I want from them and then throw the crumbs at them. Really, they want to be just like white people. And their hatred and complaint, their, all their complaints about white supremacy is that their, their envy and jealousy of white people. They really just want to be just like a white person. And they want to have the same type of supremacy as your so-called white supremacist. They're, again, jealous of the white supremacist because they want the power of the white supremacist. And they actually covet his power. And I'll even say many of them even covet his white woman because this is why you always see your pro-black oftentimes with a white woman in, and that he's living with or taking care of him. But they'll sit there and tell black women that, you know, they'll shame them for either being light-skinned or you know, warning white men or anything like that. They'll shame them for that, but you'll see this same pro-black with a white woman, or in the case of this boho pro-black woman, you'll see her with a white man. And they'll sit there and they'll say, everybody else is wrong for, you know, wanting to date who they want to date or, you know, support businesses that they want to support. But these same people will not do the same thing. Again, they remind me so much of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that, you know, harassed Jesus and tried to question and challenge Jesus that they pretty much, you know, show me they follow the same hypocritical approach as your Pharisees and your Sadducees with these high, super high standards, these ever-changing roles, um, these big elaborate made in Taiwan outfits, these kufis and dashikis saying that this is, you know, what, you know, your righteous men wear and your true, these are the real black people. And you really look at them and you see, you know, all of their hypocrisy right in front of them regarding their positions, their ideas, and even just the utter and complete insanity, you know, dealing with them. Because I've had to deal with several of them on my blog, and every time I would try to engage them, it turns into a circular argument where they go around and come around, and 
you know, there's no logic to them. They don't really want no, they don't really want solutions. They just want to get in your way and they want to, you know, just waste your time. And that's what I find with, with the big case with your pro black is that they, they're the biggest time wasters because for all their highfalutin talk and their 50 cent words and their shaming tactics, nothing ever really gets done. I mean, they, these guys can't set goals, they can't create standards, they don't, they don't understand how things work, they, they come at everything from a very childish view and just dealing with them is just a headache and this is why no one wants to really deal with them. I mean, you may get hooked into their 50 cent words and their shaming tactics or, you know, how they like to attack people, but eventually as you start listening to their rhetoric, you start seeing that they really have nothing to say and they really don't want to really do anything. And this is why I say, you know, you, the pro-black is pretty much insane because, again, when you deal with somebody who wants to go into circular arguments whenever you present hard facts to them or they want to go into ad hominem attacks and they want to personally attack people, that doesn't solve the problem. And if you want to sit there and talk about white supremacy, that really doesn't solve the problems, you know, dealing with our black community. It doesn't solve anything. I mean, talk is cheap. Action speaks louder than words.